interpret and present data, graphs, infographics, dashboards, reports, network diagrams, and maps. So data interpretation helps identify trends, patterns, and relationships within data, providing context for decision making. Presenting data effectively ensures that complex findings can be easily understood by diverse audiences. So we're going to take a look at today some visualization tools that can support with these processes, essentially helping a specific uh, project team member or a data analyst understand the data that is in front of them by turning the statistical or numeric data into a visualized format. But then through it being transformed into a visualized format, that same data then can be shown to clients or other types of stakeholders or fellow members of a project team. And it supports their comprehending as well by being in the visualized format. So we're going to look at six different categories of visualization tools that can support us interpreting and presenting data. So the first one that you might be familiar with is that of graphs. Graphs we know are in Excel and I'm sure you've played around with them before. They can show trends over time or comparisons between different data points. So we can either compare different things against each other, or we can look at a larger system and see what sectors are taken up through the things such as pie charts, okay, or just use a certain type of graph to see what is more popular than another thing. So line graphs can track sales or growth over time, and you actually see the line moving up and down, showing when things are going good or not so good, while bar charts or pie graphs, they can actually show comparisons between data, whether it be different bars being measured against each other or different sectors of a pie chart consuming more of the whole pie showing more people had a preference in that area. So that's the use of graphs there. We can use them in a variety of ways and there are a variety of graphs that can support the showing of specific types of analysis. The next one is that of reports. So reports provide detailed written analysis of data with supporting visuals. So obviously these are multiple pages that can be put together or a single page and we might actually have a graph within our report but then there is also supporting written analysis talking about what's in the graph. So it actually combines them together. So for example, a financial report could present quarterly results for a specific business and that will be supported by charts and graphs and then explanatory text that supports those charts and graphs explaining what the finances are looking like. They're going great, they're not going so great, but they might be saying, as you can see here at this point, things turn around a bit. So they actually explain what's going on. So they offer the best of both worlds, a bit of written analysis and visualizations working together to convey data. The third one we'll look at is that of infographics. They combine data with visual storytelling to communicate information. So oftentimes we've got these multiple boxes laid around the screen and in, within each box it's telling a different part of the story and you have little iconography within all of them all saying their different part and once again there's usually text in there kind of explaining what's going on as well but not as much as a report still very summary point that's what we say so this may involve summarizing key statistics about a company's market share but designed to be engaging and easy to interpret so it really simplifies what's going on but there are distinct sections telling uh, different parts of the larger story. And yeah, the iconography within the infographic really supports that. The fourth one is out of dashboards. And these are a lot of fun. And this is actually uh, direction this subject is going with the development of dashboards as a part of your assessments. So they provide real-time interactive summaries of data, often used for monitoring performance metrics, but as well as data analysis itself. So you can actually see graphs on your screen. We've got these line graphs on the screen or a pie chart on the screen or some other type of graph on the screen, as well as tables of data and information. And then through the tools of the dashboard, you can switch data around and turn certain things on and off and see how the graphs change in response to this. Or you could also summarize demographics that make the actual graphs change as well. So the dashboard is like this live graphical a tool that can actually respond to data as it is changed by the users on their end. So for example, a sales dashboard may display key performance indicators, KPIs, such as revenue, conversion rates, and customer demographics. And then you could break up those demographics and focus on specific uh, demographics based on where people who live in certain areas or stores in certain areas, okay, or revenue based on the different amount of income or sales that is going on. So there's many ways the data can be either combined or connected or also isolated and focused on specific areas with tools available in the dashboard for making those changes in analysis with ease. 
The fourth one we'll look at is that of network diagrams. These visualize the relationships and flows between various entities within a system. So this could be a network diagram that pretty much represents a network, a local area network within a business or a larger one within an enterprise. And it actually shows how the computer systems are connected to routers and switches. And that's how the network is built. And we can see those clusters in the network or the segmentation in the network. But it can also use to illustrate the structure of social networks as well. All right, so they can help us set up our network infrastructure, both as a planning tool, but also for having an actual plan for our network as well when it is in place too. And then the final one we'll look at is that of maps. Okay, we all know what maps are. They show geographical locations. So maps can display spatial data useful for geographic analysis and location-based insights. All right, so we can actually look at real world locations and then we can actually apply like colorization tools that support maybe certain demographics or certain regions in that map where things might be doing very well or very uh, poorly from a sales aspect. So heat maps can show sales performance by region or maps illustrating the spread of a particular phenomenon across locations. That could be an environmental phenomenon and we could see that a certain weather pattern is moving across the state or the country. Or as said, it could be actually based Based on sales data and we can actually see the stores and they might their regions might be highlighted in red showing that those sales are hot they're selling really hard okay whereas there might be stores that are then in blue okay and it's showing that things are a bit slower in those areas there and so that can be shown with the map data so I hope this video has given you an understanding of these four tools acting as the visualizations that support the interpretation and presentation of data through turning data into a visualization, it supports clients and stakeholders and users and potential customers in comprehending data and can really support an enterprise in showing their statistical information in a way that actually looks aesthetic and is easy to comprehend for these audiences we might be showing. And if it's easy to comprehend for them, it's also easy to comprehend for the person actually doing the analyzing. So visualizations are such an important tool from an interpretation aspect, but also from a presentation aspect in delivering data to specific target audiences.